get the glory out of this thing. What you're about to see is a living and walking testimony. I should have told him that it's just now beginning. And so I was led on to prison. I went to prison and I received a sentence of 15 years and 8 months. And I got incarcerated in February of 2004, October. Jesus. I gave my life to Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I've been walking with him ever since. Amen. But as I began to walk with Christ, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory. then my vision began yes. Yes. to become clear. Yes. Like Paul described on his Damascus Road oh, no. experience, he said that he was blinded. Yes, but when the scales began to fall off, yes, so he could see clear. On, yes. Then I began to understand yes. who I belong to. On, yes. Then I began to understand there's some things that I can't do no more. Then I began to understand that there's some folks I got to cut off. Then I began to understand that there's some places I can't go no more. Then I began to understand that God has a standard. That we must live by. Amen. Amen. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. And so I remember, Miss Lucinda. My God. I remember that as God began to work on me, Jesus. I began to understand what my priorities yes. were. Yes. Because yes. I had left a wife and two boys Come on, sir. on the street. My God. And, 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 and when I left, you see, me and my wife never had kids together. I had a son and she had a son. Yes. Together we had two sons. Yes. Yes. But we all lived together Amen. when I was free. But when I got arrested, yes. Come on, son. then my son, his whole, my biological son, Jesus. his entire situation changed. Well, he was, he, he went back to live with his birth mother. Yes. Jesus. And Jesus. his circumstances were different. Yes. It was hard. It was a yes. struggle. Yes. Yes. God began to show me some things. And so, Paul, the Bible says that Paul met Timothy in, in uh, the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. That as he was visiting and ministering in the city of Lystra. And it was brought to his attention that there was this young man who, who was on fire for the Lord. And Paul at that point took Timothy yes, he did. under his wing. Yes, he did. Come on, and he began to be a mentor yes. to Timothy. Yes, a father figure yes. to Timothy. Yes, he did. And ultimately, Timothy packed his bags and went on the road on yes, with Paul. Come on. And their relationship was spanned some 20 years yes, yes, from that point yes. until Paul finds himself writing this book. Yes. Second Timothy. Come on now. So true. So, and so, if you can imagine all the duties yes. of a father. Come on now. Mm -hmm. My Lord. The duties include being a caretaker. Come on, sir. Talk about it. The duties include being a provider. Talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about it. And if you're in your right mind and right spirit, yeah. a priest. Ultimately, Paul realizes that he's this young man's teacher. Somebody say teacher. Yeah. And so they begin to travel to different cities, yeah. ministering together through Macedonia yes, and several other different places. Yeah. And Paul, he raises up Timothy strong enough in the word to where he's able to leave Timothy, the pastor of church in Macedonia. Come on, sir. Glory to God. Jesus. And so years go by. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine all the time that they spent together, yes, yes. all the teachable moments that they shared, all the things that Timothy has learned yes. from Paul. Yes. You see, as a father, yes, sir. it is important, vitally important, Lord, Jesus, Jesus. that we teach yes. our children on, the ways of life. Yes. It is vitally important that we prepare them yes. 
for the things that they will face in this walk called life. Amen. Come on, it is vitally important yes. that we prepare them My Lord. the best that we possibly can. Right. So right. Paul had been a teacher to Timothy. Yes. He raised Timothy yes. in the gospel. Come on, sir. Most scholars believe that they met around the time that Timothy was about 15 or 16 years old. Come on, sir. And they say that Paul was about 15 to 17 years older yes. Yes. than Timothy. Come on. And so as God began to allow my vision to become more clear, and I realized yes, how much I had let my children down. Come on, sir. I realized yes, sir. how much I had hurt them. My God, my God. Mm. God said to me, you still their teacher. God is saying to somebody today yes, sir. Come on. that regardless of what you all have gone through with Come your on. kids, Regardless of how bad they've hurt you, Come on, sir. they said some hurtful things to you, yeah. they've done some hurtful things to you, yeah. maybe you've done some bad things to them, yeah. Come on, sir. but yet you still, as a parent, right. you still right. they teach you. Right. Amen. And so I began to want to get it right. Oh, I had been a great provider. But nonetheless, because I was not a led properly in the spirit, yeah. I could not lead them in the spirit. Come on, sir. That's good. That's good. Oh, and so essentially, I had abandoned my children. Jesus. And so as my priorities began to change, yeah. my youngest son, his, his struggles were immense my God. in life and in school. Yeah. He, he, he was failing and he was behind and Jesus. I was able to maintain and to keep a good relationship with him through phone calls and visitation and things of that nature, but yet and still, nothing beats your presence. And I could not figure it out. I could not figure out why is he struggling so bad in school. So years passed, and I couldn't really figure it out. And so I began to I began to write different churches mm -hmm. to see if they could provide some kind of aid, some kind Come of tutelage. Come on, sir, that's good. No response. Come on, sir. I began to write organizations, the yes. Urban League and others. No response. Yes. And I remember sitting in my cell one day and I was sitting on my bed and God said to me, Come on. you're his teacher. Can I shed just a little more light on? God said, you're his teacher. My cellmate worked in the prison education department. And so I got the idea in my head. I said, Gio, his name is Gio. I said, Gio. I said, listen, I need you to bring me a high school level English book, a high school level math book, High school history. Come on now. Uh, 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 high school science. Amen. And he said, What you need all this stuff for? I, I said, Don't worry about it, just bring it. I know that's right. And so he got the books. And I got the books down there and I told my son, I said, We're going to start tutoring right. right now. Amen. So if I can be real about it, I took a cell phone. My son got his phone. I said, you send me pictures of your work. All right. And he sent me pictures of it. And I look at what he got to do. Yeah. And we do it together. Yeah. Amen. And what I learned is that he really was not struggling in every subject. The only subject that he really struggled in was math. Right. The rest of it was just bad habit. Right. The rest of it was he just didn't have nobody pushing him. Yeah. The rest of it, he just didn't have nobody motivating him. Yes, yes. But what I discovered in math was that by this time, my son was in the ninth grade. Yeah. Okay. And I don't mean to make him look bad, but I just got to tell the truth about it. Come on, tell him. 
He was in the ninth grade and he didn't know how to multiply. Come on now. Come on. And I said, I said to myself, I said, how is it that he could be passed to this grade and that grade when you learn multiplication in about the third grade? But I left when he was four years old. But he's in the ninth grade now and he didn't know how to multiply. And so I said, we're going to do it. We're going to learn right here. So right, so right there from prison, I tell my cellmate, my cellmate saw what I was doing. He, and, and, and now you know you ain't supposed to be on no cell phone in prison. Right, right. So you got to get a lookout for you. My cellmate, he said, man, what you doing? I watch the door for you any day. And so he sat there and watched the door Amen. while I would tutor my son from a cell phone from a prison cell. Because God said to me that you are his teacher. No matter what nobody else is not doing, you're his teacher. You're the one that left him. He's your responsibility. And so we begin to, we begin to get it, but by this time he had already failed one grade. And so a couple of years later, we, we, we continued on that path. And a couple of years later, I came home. Well, when I came home, I wasn't inside the home, but I was at the halfway house. Yes, and yes. so it was kind of still yes. a, a hindrance. Come on. And so my counselor at the halfway house, he said, well, where do you want your first pass to be? They give you a pass to go somewhere for a couple of hours. I said, I need to go to my son's school. Amen. I need Come to set up on. a teacher's conference. Right. Yeah. And, so, so, and so he looked at me. He said, no, you, don't, you, you don't need to go and... Uh, go to Walmart and get your hygiene and get this and get that. I said, I need to set up a teacher's conference at my son's school. And so we set up the conference. And see, another thing that I had done from prison is I got all his teacher's information. The principals, I was writing all of them. And I was trying to let them know that he's not standing alone, but that he do have a family and a father that do love him. And so I began to email them. The prison set up an email system where you could email. I began to email them. I never got a response. But when I walked into that teacher's conference, and I introduced myself, then there was a few of those teachers who said, okay, I remember you. you you've emailed me time and time again. You've written me a few letters. And so we began to talk about my son's situation, and I began to share some things with them. And, 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 I, and I gotta tell you that right away they did not get it. Now why? Come on. And so we left that conference. My God. And I began to contact them every single day. Amen. Every one of his teachers every day got an email from me. Amen. What is it that he need to do? Amen. What did he do in class today? How do you feel he understands the work? Come on. There came a point in time when they realized that daddy was serious and daddy wasn't going nowhere. I believe I got some witnesses up in there. And so after a while, I no longer had to email them. They would beat me to the punch. I, I would wake up to emails. I would go to bed to emails. They would be telling me, Mr. Brinson, Elijah has this assignment. He needs to do this by this thing. He got to have this turned in. And so we began to make some ground, but he was but he was yet still trying to understand. He was still going through changes because when daddy came home, come on now. Come some on. stuff had to change. Come on. Come on. God said you gotta be tenacious. Yes, sir. Somebody say tenacious. tenacious. See, to be tenacious means to be determined. All right. To be so determined. Yeah. You got to tell yourself that ain't nothing going to stand in my way. Amen. Ain't nothing going to stop Amen. me from seeing it through. Amen. You got to be tenacious. Come on, sir. Oh, God. God. And so we continued on and, I would, and I, would, I would come home from work. And sometimes I would work in a job and I would come home from work. And I would know the assignments that he got to do. Bad habits yes, sir. would cause him not to do it. But right. I'll come in, I'll look through his stuff, and he ain't done it. It might be one o'clock in the morning. Oh, get, up. get up. Get up. We got to do this. One o'clock in the morning. Come on. Come on. 
o'clock in the morning. No, no, you're going to get up. And we'd be up to about 3 in the morning sometimes doing homework. Making sure that it was done. And so what my son had to realize is that either I'm going to do this work or daddy going to get in my mind. Either I'm going to do this work or we're going to be up to 2, 3 o'clock in the morning doing it. So I might as well just do it on my own so daddy ain't got to come mess with me. See, it's something about a father. See, going back to that mother lion. That mother lion, she was she was trying to get those little lion cubs to behave. She was trying to get them to preserve their energy because they had a long hike to go to wherever they were trying to get to. So they had to rest. And so she was trying to get them to sit down somewhere. And they just kept on playing. They kept jumping around. But all of a sudden, a few minutes later, oh, Papa Lion walked up. And as I sat there watching that television, I watched that male lion walk up and he just let out one big loud roar. And everything stopped. Nobody moved. Oh, some of y'all women know what I'm talking about. Y'all be telling them on oh, hard head boys, can you just take the trash out? Will you please just take the trash out? Didn't I tell you uh, two minutes or five minutes ago to take the trash out, but you're still sitting here playing this game? But when daddy walk in, didn't your mama tell you to take the trash out? And so as I begin to, as I begin to motivate my son, push him, my mother was there. My mother was saying, Mio, I, I think you're being too hard on me. Come on, I said, I said, Mama, I said, Mama, I said, Daddy home. Daddy got it from here. I said, I thank you. I respect you. But Daddy got it from here. Nonetheless, my son, he began to work harder. He began to try to get it together. But he still failed in that same year I came home. I had been on a few months. But change was, it was, it was being seen. You, you, you could kind of identify it. So he failed. Now he's two grades behind. He's two grades behind. Watch this now. Watch this now. Watch God. He two grades behind. Come on. And I continued probably every couple of months or so, I set up another teacher's conference. Come on, and we game plan and we strategize. Yeah. Well, when he started school in August of 2017, Come on. which should have been his senior year, Come on. he was in a 10th grade homeroom. Jesus. Come on. And so, I told my son, I said, listen, I said, you can do it, man. You, man. you don't have to fail no classes. That's right. That's right. Come on. You can do it. Yeah. And I began to get him to look at it from a different perspective. I didn't see how he was going to graduate Come on. because he's two grades behind. Man. But nonetheless, he began to get it. Yeah. He began to understand. Man. And so as the weeks and the months went on, He's just about on the honor roll. Yeah. Come on. Well, then it came a time nearing the end of the first semester. Come on, sir. And we had another teacher's conference. Yes, Lord. And one of the ladies there, she, she said, listen, we got a program now. And I'm looking at his credits where he can double all of his credits. He can go to school here. And go to school when you get out of school, go back to school. And if he passed everything, he can literally graduate on time. And so I looked at my son, I said, Do you want it? He said, Daddy, I want it. And I had to warn him. 
I said, listen, I said, it ain't going to be easy. I'm going to push you. I'm going to motivate you. But if you want it, you can have it. He took 21 classes. 21 classes in order to graduate on time. And I'm here to tell you that God did it. That he was able to start the school year off in a 10th grade home room and he ended up walking down the aisle. Didn't have to go to summer school. He ended up walking down the aisle with his classmates in the year that he was supposed to graduate in. You see, it's something about being a father. You see, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult it is, a father is still a father. You see, when Timothy realized is that Paul still yet loved me, that I'm still on his mind. Even though he's faced with certain death, he's writing me from a prison cell. You see, what we got to know as fathers and as parents in general, that no matter what we go through, no matter how many times they hurt us, no matter how much life has beat us up, but yet and still, I'm still a father. We got to know that God is on our side God is saying you a father anyway. Through thick and thin, you still that child father. I don't care if the baby mama ain't acting right. You make sure you got a relationship with your child. I don't care if the world is beating you up. It don't matter if you in a prison cell. You make the best of it because it's still your responsibility. I believe I got some witnesses up in here. You see, a father is still a father. Yes. No matter what we go through. No matter how hard it gets. A father is still a father. And just like Paul, if you ain't got none of your own that you birthed, God is saying there's plenty of young men out here. There's plenty of young ladies out here that you can be an example to. God said, take hold of one like, yeah. like, like, like Paul did Timothy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. A father is still a father. Yeah. No matter what we go through, yeah. a father yeah. is still a father. Yeah. No matter how hard it gets, yeah. a father yeah. is still a father. Yeah. When you flat on your back, yeah. a father yeah. is still a father. Yeah. See, what changed in my son's life? All his circumstances was basically the same. But just like those little lion cubs, the only thing that changed was daddy came home. See, when you got a pleasant father in your life, statistics say, you know they say numbers don't lie. Statistics say that that child is about 70% stands about a 70% chance of not going to prison of being successful in their life when dad is home you see that's why we got to spend time with our kids don't let this raise your child as a matter of fact sometimes you got to make them take a break from it as a matter of fact you got to put some parental guidance on this thing you see a father is a father See, when daddy comes home, Jesus. when you got a present father in your life, Jesus. things line up. Yes, when you got a present father in your life, yes, they will. them children will fall into place. Yes, they will. The household will run right. Yes, they will. Ain't no knock on my mother now, because y'all fabulous. Amen. Yes, they are. But God gave a father yes, alone. He gave a father a role. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. A father. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you something, Miss Annette, Kill. Jesus. In closing, I'm going to say this. Jesus. 
I remember our neighborhood My over there on 4th Street. Jesus. And I tell people this all the time. I remember all of the elderly people that lived in the neighborhood. Yes. Mr. Holmes and his wife, my grandmother, yes. Miss, Lu uh, Miss uh, Lewis, I mean, I Miss um, in the greenhouse, yes. uh, Miss Abdella, yes. and you all. But I remember my Mr. Marcel. Yes. This is what a man would do. Oh, when he cut his grass, oh, he cut the whole neighborhood's grass. Yes. When he cut his grass, all these old women got their grass cut. Because he understood his role in the community. When something needed to be fixed, my grandmama would say, I got to call Mr. Marcel. He come running, he wouldn't charge her a dime, even when she tried to pay it. That's what you call a man. Amen. I even remember that. It, 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 it wasn't my own father that taught me how to fix a bicycle and right. how, to, how to repair a flat tire. Come on. Mr. Marcel would do it for All me. Right. It came a point in time, he said, Mio, I'm going to show you how to do this. That's it. That's it. And I remember getting a flat tire, and I, I said, Mr. Marcel, can I use your tools? And he said, Mio, you know where they at. They're right there on the side of the house. And he let me use the tools, Come on. fix my bicycle. Yeah. But this thing my God. was a father yeah. 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 to the neighborhood. Yeah. It was an example that we could look out and see, yeah. that we could reach out and touch. Yeah. God is saying to the men in this house, yeah. Yeah. he said, be a father yeah. even to your neighborhood. Yeah. Be an example to the children. Yeah. Be an asset to your community. Be a father that people can see, that people can reach out and touch. Because a father is still a father. See, there are some things that happen when daddy comes home. Amen. 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 Praise God.